If you've been watching our other videos on wall tie corrosion, you'll have noticed the big difference between remedial ties, modern remedial ties, and the ties that we take out or isolate. Now, you'll see the stainless steel ones nowadays are much smaller. Don't be put off by that. In fact, here's a stainless steel wall tie. This isn't a remedial wall tie. It's a wall tie that would be in a brand new house. And you can see how thin it is. And it's thin for lots of reasons. One of them is stainless steel is a lot stronger than normal steel. The other one is that nowadays what we want is a little bit of flexibility because buildings do move a little bit as they warm up and cool down. So in, certainly in brick and block buildings um, we want to maintain some movement but we don't want the wall to fall away and that's what these do. So if I or one of my surveyors has been along to your property hopefully it was good news and you don't need any wall tie work doing. Um, sadly there are cases when you do and at that point, people get worried. Is it going to be the right job? How long is it going to take? Is there going to be a lot of mess? Um, we get asked these things every day and have been for the last 30 years plus. So I thought we'd just take you through a range of wall ties here to show you the different types of remedial tie and just to take some stress out of the situation because I've never yet a manufacturer of wall ties yet who didn't tell me that his tie is the best in the world and the only one we should use. The truth is that there are lots of different makes and models of wall ties and they all have their place. Our surveyors, myself included, are qualified and experienced enough to know which one to choose. But even then, we have on-site testing procedures to make sure that if we've made a mistake, we can easily change that. And this can happen, even a company as experienced and expert as Brick Tie. Um, we, don't, we haven't got x-ray eyes and if a, if a house has got cavity wall insulation, for instance, the inner leaf isn't visible, and when we start work, if we find we're not quite getting the performance we want, we need to know enough and our technicians need to know enough to switch to an alternative. And that doesn't cost our clients anything extra. We always issue a fixed price quotation. It's simply that we'll do what we need to do to make sure that the end product fits the bill. So let's have a look at some wall ties. This one's one of my favourites. Actually, it's little neoprene drip ring is missing. Um, but it's 30 odd years old. It's one of the first types of wall tie we ever used. If you look at our logo on our business card, you'll actually see a little diagram showing basically this tie. We don't use them nowadays. There are um, alternatives that are more appropriate in a, in a vast uh, number of cases. But the procedure, the basic uh, functionality is still quite common. And you can buy mechanical expanding ties, because that's what these are, um, today. How these work is that we'll drill a small hole, usually through the face of the brick or the, mas or the masonry unit if it's stone, and then the tie's wound up and torqued, as we say, and it expands. It tries to get too big for the hole, and that's how it holds itself in place. The problem there, of course, is if the masonry is a little bit on the weak side, or if you can't even see it because it's got render, you can sometimes have issues with mechanical ties. If the inner leaf is very soft as well, a mechanical fix may fail retrospectively when the brick cracks later. The mechanical ties can also come in a combination. And in this case, we've got a mechanical expanding sleeve on one end, and on the other end, just a naked piece of deformed stud. That deformed stud is like that, so that when it's encapsulated in resin, it gives a good grip. When we talk about resin, we're not talking about glue. Often people say, what, you glue your ties in? They're not glued in. In fact, the resin's not an adhesive. It's a mechanical fix because resin is very hard when it sets and it doesn't shrink. So as a result, when you drill a hole, the hole that you drill is never quite smooth. If you inject it with resin and then place this tie in, what you get when the resin set is a mechanical fix. It's like a deformed lollipop that's stuck in the wall. You can never get it out. And the good thing about that is the resin sets very quickly. So we can put that in, leave it an hour or so, and then we can put an adapter on the end of this tie in the hole in the wall and try and pull it out. And we do that on every single job. And that gives us an idea of how the tie is working. It makes sure that we know the quality controls in place. If we take resin a step further, we can use these helical ties. The good thing about these is, if you look at the shape of it, it's got a twist in it, which means there's a repeating drip feature all the way along. We're not relying on a single rubber ring that can be moved around or displaced. So that's very good, for instance, if you've got a cavity wall insulation. Because if the tie is spanning the cavity, the last thing we need is water running and dripping off the centre. We'd rather it stayed at the outside, at the inside face of the outer leaf. 
Dry fix ties, these sorts of ties are driven into a wall down a small pilot hole. Um, we do occasionally specify these, they do have a place. We don't specify them very often because they don't fit well with the random tension testing we like to do. Once these are installed you can't really retrospectively test them. Um, and I don't like that, I want to test as we go along. So what we'd like to do is resin or screw fix that side, leave this in an oversized hole in the bed joint and then we can tension test that, make sure they're all working and then inject resin into there. And that's the most commonly used method by brick tie. If you've got stone walls, you might need something longer, nice big thick walls. These are 750mm long uh, for a barn conversion that we're currently working on. Sometimes if there's external leaf building, we might use a cheap and cheerful starter tie for the bit we're rebuilding. If you can imagine the outer leaf's been taken down, we drill the inner leaf, we then resin bond that in. You can actually swing on it <laughs> to make sure it's uh, got a good fix and then you can lay your bricks on top. There are more advanced types of ties. I won't go into too much detail, but the sock anchors, we've been using these for well over 25 years. Uh, these are excellent in weak substrates, rubble filled walls, um, any walls with voids or perforated masonry units, perforated bricks, and they go right the way along to much chunkier, thicker ties where we've got bulges that need to be restrained. Here's a sock fix tie uh, from Helifix. This, this is the valve that keeps the grout in place once it's been inflated. And they can go all the way along to ties twice the length of this one. So what you're assured of when brick tie come along having done a survey for you is that we'll specify the right tie for your house. And that may be any one of these and we'll test it and we'll make sure it works.